Oh, that's a fish. Bobber down, baby. Bobber down. Whoa. Oh, that's, guys, very next cast. Unbelievable. Very next cast. Oh, oh, what a beautiful jump. What is going on, my friends? We are out on the kayak today, and in this video, I will show you guys how to catch salmon drifting eggs under a bobber. But first, let's take a quick look at how to make these guys. All right, guys, we are going to look at how to get to this from this. First off, make sure that you have a female salmon. It is a coho that we actually caught in this video. How's that? That's some time travel weirdness right there. You're gonna see this guy or this girl caught here a little later in the video. So um, first things first, just go ahead. We're gonna do this really snappy because this is super simple. Curing eggs is not rocket science, okay? There's a lot of people that put a lot of voodoo behind this. Let's just cut the voodoo, get right into the action here, okay? So key to uh, some good eggs, ooh, that's a lot of eggs in her, uh, is just making sure that you do not wash out your fish uh, while those eggs are still in. First thing you wanna do is just simply reach in and get those, they're called skeins, uh, those are the, the egg sacs. Place them straight into, uh, if you're out in the field, a, a Ziploc bag will do for now, but at home I just like to put them into glass. It's inert, not gonna react with the eggs, do anything weird chemically. We're gonna get rid of the salmon here. All right, to the good stuff. We got our eggs here. What we're gonna do first before we start anything is simply open up those uh, sacks a little bit. That, that's where we're gonna get our cure in. We wanna work that cure into the eggs. Just open that up a little bit. There we go, see that now it's actually open. We're gonna do that with the uh, other one here as well. There we go, nice and open. Okay, all that we're gonna need, and we're gonna keep this super, super simple, okay, is just one uh, a, a nitrile glove. This stuff here has a lot of uh, coloring in it and it can actually stay in your hand. Let's just go ahead and start with the products that we're gonna use. Uh, I found this stuff on Amazon for you guys. It's just Fire Cure Pink made by Poutsky. It's actually made in uh, Ellensburg, Washington. Woohoo, buying local. Uh, then here we're gonna use also some, also made by Poutsky. It's 100% pure krill powder. Uh, this here is not some secret chemical, just plain cane sugar, all right? Some people use borax in their videos, and you know, I've used borax here and there. I think all that really does is it changes the consistency of your eggs. We're just gonna go ahead and start with our fire cure, and we're just simply gonna shake it right up into those eggs, get it all up in there. There we go. Nice. And then just simply very gently work it in. No science to it, all right? This is, again, guys, it's this simple. Look at that. Work it in. Boom, 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 boom. Do it quick. Don't waste any time. You got to get out fishing. Nothing to worry about. Flip it around real quick. Get some on the other side. Work it in, flip it, that side's good. This one just a little bit more. Boom, flip it around. Just make sure that all the surfaces are evenly coated. You don't wanna douse it in it. Um, it's called uh, burning. You'll burn your eggs if you put too much on. Okay, and what this stuff does is it's gonna extract a lot of the moisture out of the eggs and start firming them up, and you'll see that pretty much instantly. What we're gonna do next is just get some krill powder on there. Don't need a whole lot. There we go, just a nice gentle little sprinkle. Again, no formula, no exact measurements. And then all you're gonna do here is just gently, very gently massage that in there. Don't overthink it. All right, and last things, we're gonna throw on just a little bit of sugar. That just helps with consistency a little bit. I've heard uh, from plenty of people that fish will actually bite on just the pure eggs. Um, that's really the, the scent that they're after. So what we're gonna do now is just simply cover this in plastic. We're gonna go ahead and throw that in the fridge, let it sit overnight, uh, usually about 12 to 24 hours, pull it back out. You'll see that there's gonna be a lot of moisture that's coming out of there. I'm just gonna show you a batch that I made yesterday. Look at this, these are eggs from, uh, from yesterday or day before, day before yesterday, I think. Yeah, so look at that. See, I was talking about that you're gonna get a lot of liquid coming out. Uh, this batch here has actually been sitting for a little while. 
After pouring out the liquid, it's gonna be a little firmer in texture. If you leave it sitting in the liquid, the eggs will actually reabsorb some of that liquid. I know it sounds crazy, but uh, then you'll get a kind of plumper, but more liquid uh, egg afterwards. These guys here, we're gonna pour off the extra liquid because uh, I, I like a, to fish a firmer egg. It's just a little easier to cast them and everything and uh, not as much hassle. And then when I'm out fishing, I just pull out like one skein or half a skein at a time. And I'll just cut them into little, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at when we're fishing how big, but little quarter size chunks and uh, throw those on a hook and catch fish with them. All right, guys, now that you've got your eggs, let me just head over to this bank right here. So let's go ahead and take a really close look at the gear that we're using here. I am going to recommend that if you are drifting bobber and eggs, that you use a bait casting setup. Not that it can't be done with a spinning setup. I love spinning setups as well, but there are some distinct advantages when you're using a bait caster for drifting eggs, and you will see that shortly. So rod-wise, what I'm gonna recommend is the Okuma Celilo, Celilo, however you wanna say it, uh, salmon and steelhead rod. This is an eight foot, six inch, uh, medium heavy action rod. I have absolutely fallen in love with this rod here. Now, reel-wise, what we've got here is a little Abu Garcia Black Max reel. It is a fantastic reel. I was very surprised how well it does on uh, salmon. I mean, I've caught big kings on this puppy right here. Oh, it's running. And uh, everything still feels right. That's something that's really important to me is how well is this stuff going to stand up to time. Now, on this reel, we have spooled up 65 pounds uh, braided line. Uh, the reason I like 65 pound braided line is, well, you're not going to lose your, your entire main setup. Okay, now we are down to the interesting part of the setup that I'm sure a lot of you are wondering about what this, uh, what this exactly looks like. It's actually quite simple. So we've got our main line right here. Then uh, on your main line, the first thing that you're going to slip on is a little bobber stopper. They look like this. All right, they come on a little plastic tube. You uh, slide the tube over your line and then uh, pull off this little bobber stopper up onto the line, pull the little plastic tube off, and then you just simply pull on the two ends and it'll cinch down on your line. Make sure that that's nice and tight but still able to slide up and down. That way you can adjust the depth at which you're fishing. Next, what you're gonna put on is a little bead right there. This little guy here uh, bumps up against that bobber stopper and prevents your bobber from sliding over that stopper. Very important that you don't forget that little bead right there. Next, you're gonna have your bobber. Uh, this here is just a little Bomac 3.8 sounds bobber. Now under your bobber, what we're gonna have is another little bead down here. Now we've got our swivel right there. I don't know if you can see it, but that there is a fantastic swivel. Uh, make sure on your swivels that you use high quality swivels. I can't say it enough, high quality. Think about how much time you actually have to go fishing. Is it maybe once a week, once a month? Do you wanna ruin that day over pinching a few pennies at the store? I mean, seriously, the difference between like a cheap Eagle Claw swivel and one of these guys, this is a P-Line swivel. I'll see if I can find a link for those as well. Uh, there's several other high quality ones out there, but make sure that it stands up, that it's actually like rated for a certain amount of strength. Um, because the, the, the price difference is seriously like five cents a swivel or something. Don't lose your fish over five cents, guys. Use a high quality swivel. Now, the way I attach this swivel is with an improved flinch knot. There are other knots that work, but that's just my favorite one to use. Now, snapped into the swivel, we have, uh, this is a, I believe it's called an inline weight. Correct me if I'm wrong, but what it looks like when you buy them is uh, just like this. It's just a little weight that has a swivel on each side. One side connects to your, your swivel on top, and then below I just tie off my leader uh, with an improved clinch knot again. Uh, now, for the leader, I am using P-Line uh, 15 pound mono. So on this leader, we just have uh, just some cheap little uh, split shot weights on there, and that is to make sure that your line sinks down fast. You don't wanna cast uh, right over your favorite hole, and drift your bobber over it just to find out later or never find out that your eggs never actually sink down in time to hit that hole uh, effectively. So for your hooks, again, all I can say is quality. Make sure you get good hooks. Uh, this is such an important part of your tackle, not just as a, a high quality hook, sharper and stays sharp longer, 
but the uh, material is also heat treated better. It's just a better steel alloy uh, that does not bend open, which will happen with cheap hooks. Seriously, it's the most frustrating thing ever. But when you finally hook into that big fish that you've been hoping for all that time and your hook bends open, you will regret not spending $5 a pack or $3 a pack versus a dollar 49 okay don't don't lose your fish over a dollar for a pack of like five or ten hooks what i would recommend is uh anything really in the gamakatsu uh lineup also another brand uh, that i got a great deal at uh down at uh, big j's in ording that's an awesome store if you guys have never been there if you're ever in ording stop by big j's but that brand that i'm talking about is owner they make uh, pretty nice hooks as well very sharp high quality i've never had a problem with those now the way that i would recommend that you attach these hooks to your leader is with an egg loop knot what that does is it gives you the ability and i don't know if you can you can see that here i'll try and zoom in but uh look at that you can actually pull a little loop through the eyelet of the hook all right, now that we've covered our terminal tackle, let's throw some eggs on there. Now this is a pretty big cluster. Some people would say, throw the whole thing on and you'll catch a big king salmon. But you know what, I've caught kings usually on sometimes the smallest clusters of eggs uh, that I've floated before. So what we're gonna do is part this size here into about three uh, little sections. I like dime to quarter size clusters of eggs. Now a lot of you have asked too, how long do the eggs last? secret guys these are not the eggs that we just cured earlier in the video these eggs here are actually from last september they are actually a year old all right to hook up these eggs the first thing that i do is just put one of my fingers into that egg loop you can see it's in there then i will take the eggs and just uh just hook them on a couple a couple times down there on the hook and then we have this little back section that we're gonna pull up now with that finger we're gonna throw that egg loop right around there pull it tight a little bit and look at that now the whole hook except for the tip is covered in eggs that's exactly what we want that way when the fish uh, gobble it up into their mouths uh, that tip is still exposed for your hook set okay now that we are all set up let me show you guys how to fish this setup oh, did you guys see that All right, now I've got the bobber stopper set at about four to five feet. Uh, that's always the tricky part when you're bobber fishing is finding out how deep to fish. Rule of thumb is rather fish a little too shallow than too deep. If you're fishing too deep, you're just dragging along the bottom um, and your chances of getting uh, your gear snagged up and lost uh, are dramatically higher than if you're just floating midwater. The cool thing is that even midwater salmon will actually dart up at your eggs and they'll hit them. Uh, coming out of the deep. It's totally crazy. All right, so let's go ahead and just give that a, a nice first cast. Mend your line as the bobber approaches you. And then as it passes, we're just gonna give that a click. Keep our thumb on that spool. And look at that, the spool starts uh, letting out line automatically for you. Now what a bite looks like, and this is kind of key to bobber fishing, is um, it, it's very faint. There's not a whole lot of better ways to describe it. Sometimes you'll get lucky and that bobber just goes down like a, like a trout took some, some worms, but, uh, but that's usually not the case when you're bobber and egg fishing for salmon. What they're doing, uh, and this is just my theory, is they're, they're attacking the eggs. It's not so much that they're trying to eat them, all right? They're not gobbling them up, putting them in their belly and swimming off with them. Instead, they're just hitting those eggs, attacking them. It's like a territorial thing or like a, hey, let me destroy uh, your genes so that my babies uh, have more space to survive kind of reaction. So what that means is they're only gonna hit them for a split second. So oftentimes all you'll see is the bobber just dip for a second. It could be literally as faint as just a little wiggle. Uh, and that's the salmon just hitting it once. Uh, to sometimes they'll grab the eggs and actually swim off with them and then you'll get a full bobber down. But don't expect the bobber to be down for more than a split second. So you have to be watching that bobber all the time, okay? It's that, that, that's the key to catching fish on bobber and eggs uh, is just watching that bobber religiously. And the moment you see it, just twitch, just, just dip below the surface, immediately set the hook on it. Oh, 
Wow, did you guys see that bobber go down? Oh, guys, that's a fish. Look at that. See that bobber go down? It was really quick, but we set that hook immediately. Looks like a, ooh, a jack. All right, let's bring it over here. Oh, awesome. See guys, the patience pays off. Bobber and eggs absolutely works. Look at that, it might be a Jack Coho. Look at that, let's go baby. Look at that, right up there in the lip. That uh, Coho, yep, that is absolutely a Jack Coho. Oh. <laughs> Look at him, he's still got a lot of fight in him. Let's get that hook out of him. <laughs> Told you guys it can be done. Bobber and eggs, beautiful little. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, just totally spraying us with water here. That's a nice eating fish right there. So we're gonna try and see if maybe we can catch something else too. So far, we are doing pretty good. Yo! Uh. Guys, I have to say that was, uh, that, that was slightly painful. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that was even painful you, for you to watch. But next time, we will put them on the stringer first. Oh, that's a fish. Bobber down, baby. Bobber down. Whoa. Oh, yeah. That was not that long uh, after we just uh, unfortunately lost, well, released that last fish. <laughs> oh, geez, peeling a little. Come here, come here. Thank you so much for taking those eggs. Oh, that looks like another coho, guys. That looks like a coho. Oh, come here, I'd really like a, like a coho. Oh, don't go under the kayak, come on. Come on, come on, come on, easy. Oh yes, that is a nice fish, guys. That is a nice fish. Beautiful coho, bigger than that last one. <laughs> All right, let's make sure that we don't uh, make this beginner's mistake again here. <laughs> Definitely don't want to lose this one. All right, we'll bring him, bring him in the boat. Beautiful coho, look at that, guys. Look at that, we're gonna keep him in the net. We know how it goes uh, with me when, when we take them out of the net. Oh, crap. <laughs> See, they're so lively. All right, guys, that is a gorgeous hatchery coho that we just caught. Looks like this one is fresh out of the ocean. It is nice and chromey. So I'm super excited. Uh, for anyone uh, who still doesn't believe that these fish bite uh, on eggs, let me blend in a quick little uh, underwater bite clip that uh, I have from a previous video of mine. See that? They do buy it uh, on eggs. It's pretty crazy, actually. This is by far my favorite way to catch these fish. So I actually am starting to specialize in doing more underwater uh, footage like that of bites. So uh, if you guys want, if you dig underwater bites, let me know in the uh, comments below if you want to see me do more of those. Also hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Uh, that way you get notified when I come out with more videos. Uh, and that way, you know, you'll see those uh, future underwater bites of all sorts of different uh, fish species. Uh, it's something that I just really, really have enjoyed doing. So uh, also smash the like button really good, guys. Give it a big old fat smash for me uh, for finally uh, not just catching, but also like retaining one of these fish. So we're gonna go ahead and bleed them and see if we can't catch another one. Oh, that's all right. Jeez, guys, very next cast. Unbelievable. Very next cast. Oh, oh, what a beautiful jump. Guys, this is awesome. Wow. Come here, come here. <laughs> that's nuts. Seriously, this is un... Uh, oh, and we lost him. <laughs> Unedited. That, that was seriously the very next cast uh, after catching this guy right here. How nuts is that? Tell you what, we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can get like a, a three cast in a row hookup. 
All right, guys, the bite is off for me, but that is okay because we got us a beautiful coho that we are gonna take home. I will be uploading that video of the Chinook that I caught under the bridge over there, also on Bobber and Eggs. It's ripping. Oh, he's going down river. Going down river. As well as uh, many other Washington fishing videos and uh, you know, adventures tutorials. So if you guys want to join for all of that, go ahead and just hit the uh, subscribe button. There should be a little, it'll be in the end screen here in a second, as well as uh, down on the bottom right corner. And uh, then hit that notification bell. That way you'll get notified when those videos get uploaded. Also, if you want to see a little bit more, some stuff of what's going on behind the scenes and interact a little bit there, know what's coming out uh, episode-wise before everyone else, then follow me on Instagram. It's just NW Fishing Secrets. All right, guys, we will see you for the next adventure. Until then, peace out.